Another way of dealing with complex projects is to look at the use of groups. But we're not talking about event grouping, we're talking about track grouping. I'll come back and go over event grouping in a minute. I've got an event here which I'm going to use, but at the moment if I just put it here for, for reference so you can see where it is, and then possibly take all these other ones and shift them along. So I'm going to select the first one, shift select the last one, and actually control select the event below, and just pull those out so that they finish at the end of that clip, just for reference. And I think what I'll do is I'll also put a fade on there. Okay, so I've got three tracks here which are going to be, say, my intro section, and then I've got my main section. So if you're building a project up, what you might have is a different group which is going to deal with your introduction, a different group which is going to deal with your conflict, a different group that's going to deal with your resolution, and a different group that's going to deal with your result, ends, whatever you want to call it, and titles. And then you can minimize the groups to take up far less workspace. Because at the moment, we've got a problem with real estate. Here's my timeline. There is actually more clips or one other clip out of view. You can see it here with the scroll bar pull down. There's another clip that I can't even see. So how do I see all my clips? Well, firstly, I could hit F11. F11 lets me see just the timeline and shuts everything else down. But that's not a lot of use when I want to see what I'm doing to see the edits I'm making. But it does show me my whole timeline. Well, it will show me as much as will actually fit into this space. So F11 is a toggle switch. If I hit it again, it brings it back. Another way of doing it is just to minimize the actual workspace. If I click in this little button at the top here, that minimizes track height. And I can minimize track height, but obviously I'm maintaining access to some, but not maintaining access to all. So I'm losing some functionality by doing that. But if I finish with the tracks and the clips inside of it, that's OK. So if I still want to edit, I've still got access to things and I can still do some editing. I can still trim clips. As you can see, I'm actually trim a clip to make it longer or shorter. I can still do bits and pieces with tracks minimized. I just don't have access to all the buttons. But if I finished with a section, so say this was the title section and I was finished with it, what I could do is a number of things. Firstly, I could select all the clips that are in here. So I can select the first one, hold the shift key and select the last one and any I've missed out, control key, they're all selected. And then if you right click on them, one of the options you have under switches is to lock them all. And then when you lock them all, you can't do anything to them. They're completely untouchable. No problems. You can't do anything. So they're not going to be a problem when you do future editing. However, locking everything isn't always a brilliant solution because it's not always obvious that a clip is locked. So just bear in mind you have that option. But what I could do is take these tracks and group them together. Now you can only group adjacent tracks. So track one through three are adjacent to each other. So if I select one and hold shift and select three and now right click, I'm going to have track groups available to me. And when I say group the selected tracks, you'll see that they have been indented slightly. So these are the original tracks, but I've now indented and I've got a track header and I can double click in there and I can put the titles and then if I want to, I can minimize the whole group by collapsing the group, bang, and I just get a gray representation of what's there, but I can't select them, can't do anything with them. The only things I've got to do with them is I can mute the whole group, in other words, turn them all off, audio and video, or I can solo them so that that's the only thing I can see, and you can see that that's soloed and everything else is unavailable. So those are the only options I've got, unless, of course, I open up the group again, and then I can either add items to it or I can take items away. So I'm just going to minimize these other tracks just so we can see what's going on. So I've got my audio for my whole project here. What if I want to add that into the title group? Well, I could take the track and I could start to drag it up. Now, at this point, if I were to let go, it's not added it into the group. I've just moved its layer position. But if I pull it up and drop it into the group, you'll see that I get a different look with the line. So you can see that the line to the left here is showing that it actually belongs to the group and it's going at the bottom of the group. And when I let go, it's at the bottom of the group. If I want to pull it out of the group again, I can pull it down or wherever I want and change its position. But if I leave it in the group or put it back in the group so I get that icon and let go, minimize everything, you'll see that it's gone and I can't see it. It's not available to me, so I can then get on and actually edit the bits that I need to get on with, taking up as much or as little real estate on my screen as I feel I need to to get the job done. You can open and shut with a twirly, so you can easily get to bits and pieces, and of course you can still expand and contract groups as necessary. 
And if you turn around and say, right, okay, I want that music out, drag it out and drag it to the bottom and there it is. And I can, again, extend it or minimize it as I wish. Now, track groupings are great, but there are two dangers. One is if I have grouped an event inside a group and outside a group. So here's an item here, it's a piece of audio. If I were to group that with this piece of audio down here, so I'm holding the control key to select them both, and I right click and I go group, create group, okay? And then I was to shut this group up here and click away so it wasn't selected. So neither of them are selected, just double check it's not selected up here, you see neither are selected. And I go and take this item here and I start to move it. Notice that the item is moving in the group. You can see up here, it has moved with this item. So it's not locked in place. I'm going to control Z to undo that. If you want to avoid that kind of movement, what you can do again, as I showed earlier, open up your group, select all of the clips, holding the control key, whatever you need to do, right click, go to switches and lock. Then I can shut the group again, or deselect so everything's deselected, open up the group. And then when I shift this clip down here and select it and move it, you'll see that the other item is not moving, but I do get an indication that it's offset. So it's offset by 27 seconds from where the other one is. Okay, so locking will make sure that things don't move in a group. And that also would help with the other potential problem you have. So I'm just going to select all these again. And I'm going to unlock them all. So go switches, and I'm going to turn off lock so that they're unlocked and I'm going to shut my group down again and the other option I'm going to look at is the auto ripple issue now if you remember you can turn on and off auto ripple with this button but you have options now this says affect all tracks okay so if you do an edit while all tracks are selected it includes anything in a group let me just demonstrate so all tracks are selected and I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to just select a portion here ripple that down let go and notice it's also affected the group so control Z to undo that however if you take it down to affected tracks so it's now just on affected tracks and I go down and I take this track and I ripple it it's just moved that track along you can see it's actually physically moving the track along as I go so it's not affecting anything else so just be very careful with your settings if you are going to use the auto ripple function, my advice is to leave it on affected tracks because if you do have all tracks, it is going to affect all the clips inside here. Unless, of course, I'm just going to select these. They, they might have control, I might have uh, control Z back so that actually they are all selected and locked again. Let's just have a look. Are they still locked? Switches, have I relocked them? Yes, I've relocked them by going back so that they're all locked. So now if I was to do my ripple edit with all tracks, Okay, so let's just check that. All tracks are selected. So now if I do a ripple edit, it's going to affect these ones, but it's not going to affect these ones. So if I pull it back, zoom back, and let go, you see locked events are unaffected, but an unlocked events are affected. So Control Z, Control Z. All right, those are all selected. So you just need to be careful how you deal with your clips. If you really feel that you've finished and you don't want to have any danger of having any of your events affected inside the grouped track, then make sure you select everything and just lock them in place. They will be unaffected. However, if you feel that you might want to go back in and change bits and pieces, just be careful what you link and what options you choose. So don't group anything outside a track group with something inside a track group or else they'll move. And also with your auto ripple, make sure it's affected tracks only if you use it and then you won't affect anything inside the group. Now, if I wanted to group these other ones, again, I can select all of these, hold the shift key and they're selected, and then I can right click and I can go down to group, group selected, those are grouped, and I can shut it down and I can double click in here and I can call this something like um, conflict, and then it's dealt with, and you can see that I've now got plenty of screen real estate, so I can go in and create my next sequence or my next series of events, and then save that, and you can zoom in and out and see how they look. Okay, so that's track grouping and a really good way of building up a project as long as you look out for those two gotchas about having events grouped that are inside two separate groups and or the problem with having auto ripple affecting all tracks and the fact that that will also affect groups. If you want to ungroup them, right click and go to ungroup selected tracks, bang, they're ungrouped. And so you can do that with both of them, right click, 
ungroup selected tracks and they're all there. Now just one more thing if I right click this lot and put them back into a group group tracks and put them in there you'll notice that you can still move things in and out. So if I click away but I want to add this track inside this group pull it up drop it in with the little item showing at the side here showing that it's going inside the group it's inside the group if I want to pull it out again pull it out and just get the complete line that goes all the way across and it's now a track so you can either drop it in a group or pull it out very easily the only thing you can't do is group tracks that are non-adjacent to each other so I'm just going to select all these tracks and I'm going to ungroup and then I'm also going to select an additional track so I'm going to select all of those, hold the control key and select that one. And when I right click and I go to group tracks, notice you can't group them. It only works when tracks are adjacent to each other. So if I actually wanted to have this track joined in, if I moved it to underneath and now right click, you'll see that track groups, you can group selected tracks and that's actually brought in and dealt with that way. OK, so that is track grouping, a really good way of managing your projects. I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching.